folks, my name is Jonicky. And this is Madame Bathsheba. And together we are Catamancy Tarot. So welcome back. Uh, some of you may have just watched my top 10 tarot deck video. Um, and if you haven't, I'll link it below. You can go check it out. This video is going to be my like five runners up that didn't quite make the top 10 list, but I still really love and I wanted to talk about them anyways. So I made this little runners up video. Uh, so let's get into it. Let me show you the five tarot decks that didn't quite make it to the top 10. All right, so I just finished filming my top 10 videos and as I was um, trying to come up with my top 10 tarot, it was actually the last like two or three slots that was like the most difficult for me to fill. Um, my top three were kind of like really obvious and intuitive for me. My next three were my classics. So, you know, Rider Waite Smith, Marseille and Thoth, my favorite of those, which left, um, and then there was like, uh, one, I, a deck I used for altar work, which left like three slots. Um, and they were actually really hard to fill. Um, and I ended up filling them with decks I've had the longest um, that I've gotten a lot of use out of, even if a couple of them I, I barely use, um, like I don't use for readings that often, but they were still like so classic and um, that I, I couldn't not have them in the top 10. Uh, but it also feels like it, it leaves out a bunch of decks that I love to use and I actually have been using a lot more frequently. Um, so I wanted to make a little bit of a, a runners-up video um, to showcase uh, if it was a top 15. Um, these are the five decks, um, the next five, um, that would be in there. Um, so uh, we'll start off with this little guy. Um, this is the Enchanted Tarot. So sometimes it's called... Um, the the Zerner Farber Tarot. This is the newest edition, and I I really like this edition. Um, I had the white the uh, the old one with white big white borders. Um, uh, I have that copy as well. I keep it in this little in this little bag, and <laughs> uh, the copy I got was like really really warped, and it was like the awkward size where you couldn't quite shuffle it. Um, like you can't quite get your whole hand around it. So I ended up, before I knew this was ever coming out, I trimmed it to this size. Um, and I think it came out, I have mine in order right now, but, um, I, I like the way it came out, but I think I like, I prefer this version. And now I actually really regret doing that mod <laughs> because this came, like if I had known this was coming out, I would have just left this. Uh, but alas, so hey, if you're out there and you have like a copy with the white borders and you want to trade for this like um, trim version, uh, let me know. Um, it came out pretty well. Like I, I did a, I did a good job with the with the with the trim. I just like sometimes it's nice to have versions that feel very differently, and now these two just feel like too similar. But I do think that the image quality on these cards is the is um is the best uh for me um i don't have the super the super big copy um and i don't have the original zerner farber the the vintage version that came out uh back in back in the day back in the 90s but i'm a big fan of um you know you know i'm a big fan of collage and what's special about this one is that it's um, it's fabric collage, so you get all of these textures and patterns and sequins and lace that really give these images a lot of dimension. Um, so I love that, and this feels super cozy. Uh, it it's also um, I associate this deck with a, a close friend of mine. Um, it was her first tarot deck, so, uh, and she's a magical person, 
So uh, I have it gives me good vibes from that. And I love the pinks and purples. It feels like very tender. It's very sweet. Um, it's, you know, <laughs> it's just really pretty. Um, and sometimes I, uh, I wouldn't say I'm the most like feminine of, of persons. Um, but this is a deck that feels, um, feminine to me without being, I don't know, too girly. I don't know if that makes any sense, but, uh, I, I like it for that reason. Um, it's, it's like, you can, it's also a little bit, it's a little bit like cheesy in, uh, in the best way, <laughs> you know, it's, it's very, it's very love and light. It's very much these swans are in love kind of deck. And sometimes that's really, really what you want. Um, and I, uh, I recently got an Oracle deck by the same creators. Um, and I did a really big mod on that one. And that's, that's a deck that's going to be in my top 10 or Oracle um, but yeah, I, I had to, like, this felt, um, this felt, like, important enough to be, you know, this is probably, uh, I guess this is top 11. <laughs> so, you know, these, these next, um, five decks I'm going to show you are really, you know, uh, they're really, like, my, still, you know, they didn't make it to the top 10, but they're still, um, really important decks to me. Um, the next one I want to show you has like a very different vibe. <laughs> like, I guess this is going to be kind of jarring because it's such a different vibe than the deck we just saw. But I think like with these next, like with the top decks, you had the absolute classics that you can use for all purposes. With this next five, it feels like you can really get into like more specific vibes. Um, like, I, I don't want to use the Enchanted Tarot for all things, but for some things, for some things that feel, like, cute and sweet and, like, sometimes you need a little bit of, you know, a dollop of whipped cream on your strawberries, like, that's when you use that. And then sometimes you're you're feeling dark and moody and, you know... And you just had a nightmare, and things are really intense, and so then you need a deck that can kind of match that kind of intensity. So this is um, the Vertigo Tarot. Um, this is a deck that um, uh, was attached to the Sandman comics. I think this I have the um, first edition that came out in the '90s. If you're if you're looking to pick up a copy. You can still find these out there in the world. There's two editions. Um, if you can find it, the first edition that comes in the big white square box um, has better cardstock. Uh, just just uh, if, if you're a searchin, keep that in mind. I think the and the borders are this like plum color that I've and I've edged it to kind of match. Um, and this deck feels it does. I also, so in addition to like decks that feel, I talked about in my, um, in my favorites video, decks that feel kind of like timeless or, um, or kind of ancient, this feels, uh, I don't know, it, it does feel like 90s grunge, early 2000s grunge, um, in a way that is like kind of nostalgic, like the, uh, uh, Enchanted Tarot, also very 90s, but in a very different way. Um, and I love this deck. Uh, it reminds me of a place in time, um, but it's also like a deck that has really rich imagery that you can get a lot of really good readings out of. And so this is like my favorite, aside from something like Barbara Walker, uh, this is my favorite deck that has kind of like um, darker imagery. And it's a little bit more Pip style. Um, the guidebook is written by Rachel Pollock, so it, it's good. Um, uh, and so uh, she's doing some like interesting stuff in the guidebook with the miners that I really appreciate. Um, and I find these images are kind of like evocative to read with. Um, and I, I use this a lot in kind of like... 
um, dream work. I don't know, Sandman, it's, it, it, like, it makes sense that this would be a dream deck, and particular for, like, um, difficult, when you're having difficult dreams, um, but I think it's so cool, um, and, uh, I think this is the time of year where I'm going to leave this, I'm going to leave this one out. Um, this is kind of the, the time of year that it's, I, I reach, I, like last year I used this along with the Craft Decadence Oracle, like all the time, like it was my main combo for a while. Um, and I just think it's so good. It's so good. So it's, it's definitely, it's like in my, it's in my top, top decks of all time. Just not the, um, not the, not the top 10. Uh, again, because like these next decks are, are some of my favorites, but they have a more kind of like specific, um, they're more vibey, you know, they're more moody. Uh, they're, you know, uh, you got to be in the right mood for this. It's not a deck you pull out for everyone at, at all times, I guess. Um, so that is the uh, Vertigo Tarot. The next one is a deck that... Uh, uh, it's It's been around. It's been around for a long time. This is the Mountain Dream Tarot. Um, so this is a, a photographic deck. Um, by B. Nettles, made in the 70s. Um, and this is another deck that I only got in the last two years. Ooh, something like that. Uh, I don't know why I, I didn't, I knew about it before then, but um, I don't, it's my, it's it's so good. And it, again, it feels, um, it gives me similar, like, 70s energy as something like the Aquarian Tarot, or even like the Morgan Greer, like those like um, very very classic uh, Rider Waite Smith decks. Um, but there's something about I love the I love the photography and the staging of it all. And there's something that still, even though like you know, uh, some of it feels um, you know like with some of some of the stylings are very dated. There's something that still feels like kind of timeless. Like you could you could walk into a coffee shop and still meet this dude. <laughs> um uh I don't know about this guy. This is like very the the pan, you know, corduroy bell bot, you know. Well, maybe you could you, who knows. This guy was, might still be roaming the streets somewhere. Uh but um, so this is a deck that I've, uh, it's so good and it's, it's another just like absolute classic, um, that this is a deck that I would feel comfortable like, um, doing a reading for a lot of different kinds of people. Um, with the last two decks I've shown, um, like, uh, though I would only get those out for like a specific kind of person. But this is a deck that I feel like can read well for lots of different kinds of folks. Um, and it's still, there's something about it that still feels, um, it still speaks to the moment. Like it's, it hasn't become, um, it hasn't become like a fossil, even if, um, even if it's very much a product of its time. I don't know if that makes sense, but, um, yeah, so this is another, another one that's kind of a top, top deck of all times for me. Um, I'm, I, I guess I haven't been showing the backs really. Um, I, th I think, I think these are cute. I don't, I don't super love it, but you know, that's perfectly, perfectly fine. Um, so my next deck, uh, I was kind of thinking, I'm a, you know, I'm a huge collage girly, and I guess in my top 10, I had three collage decks. Um, I had the Spolia, I had the Ritual Tarot, and then I had Alchemy of Thoth. Um, but a lot of the, a lot of my, uh, 
a lot of my favorite decks are collage decks. And so in this next five, I knew I needed another collage deck, if not more than one. Um, and I was like, after those three, I was trying to think of which is my next favorite collage deck. And some of the contenders were like the Telesma, um, which I've had for a long time. And I, I really love that deck. Or even something that came out just this summer, like I've been, I didn't expect to love the Sistine Tarot as much as I do. It's not quite my um, usual aesthetic, but it like really struck a chord. I was really vibing with that this summer, but it, it, it felt a little kind of too recent and kind of like very tied to, for me at least, like summer vibes. Um, and then, yeah, I, like... There's Daydreaming in C2, Aquamarie, uh, like just a bunch of them. But the one that is uh, is is next, I think is actually the Adapt Tarot. So I found this deck on Etsy. Um, this is, I think she's doing another um, print run of this soon. I don't, I don't know if I have like, I know I have an early edition um but I, this is one that I surprisingly, like, I reach for this one quite often. Um, I like the colorful borders and the backs are kind of, they've got a lot going on. Um, but I, and I don't know of any other, there's not a lot of, there's, uh, I don't know. Um, there are some decks that do have, like, really colorful borders, but, um... I really like how it works. And then there's a lot of um, white space in the images themselves, which like allows you to take a little breath with the image. And there's something about like the arrangement. This deck just reads so well for me. I get a lot of, I guess, like different kinds of intuitive hits. Um, and it's really creative. Um, like, I don't, like, you get, you, you do get, like, the little person going on a long walk in the Eight of Cups, but then you get, you get some other stuff to kind of, like, um, you know, put, put all that in, in perspective. You get this big vessel and the moon and, um, uh, like, Five of Wands, you get you, you get a couple different, like, it's a, like a smattering, a collection of images that all come together to produce something. So it's almost like you have a few little scenes in lots of the cards, um, which I really like. And then, um, yeah, this is one of the decks that it has a mix of things that feel uh, very old, almost kind of ancestral to some things that like you know uh feel a little bit more contemporary perhaps um and it also feels there's like a lot of fun nature stuff it feels um uh kind of very national geographic or um uh I I think I joked when I originally did this video is it feels like uh Oh, I think that's, I think my cat bit that card. Um, it feels kind of, uh, um, uh, eyewitness. Did you watch those as a kid? The, the eyewitness shows or those books. Um, so for me, it kind of has this little nostalgia thing, but it's, it just reads really well. And I think this, um, this is my like next favorite collage deck. And like, this is so sweet so sweet and it it like it works it looks really good in pairings with a lot of my other collage decks so i think that's my that's my next um that's my next favorite collage deck um yeah uh that's that's the one um which brings us to i have one more deck here to show you guys um and this next one was also i don't know felt kind of tricky um and this is uh this is another like heavy heavy hitter or like a, a big major working deck like um for me 
the, you know, the Kazimlar feels like really special and very sacred in a particular way. And this is the um, Mysteries of the Black Madonna. Um, and this is another like big important deck that feels like it has a real presence. Um, and I could have chosen instead of this one, I think an easy one to like uh, swap out for this would be something like, um, and I thought about it. Ethel Calhoun's Tarot is Color, or even the other Fulger Press deck, the um, Leonora Carrington. Um, they have a, a like they both have a similar sense of like weight and like magicality and like intent um, that went into it. So they both feel like really big workings deck. And I think I I think the reason that I chose this one over this one here is because uh this one has a really like I've the guidebook is really cool um and I think that if I had more words to go on um with this deck I think uh it would have made it but it's it's like a close uh it's a close call really um so this is a deck uh that's another deck that's just like the the creation of this deck is so creative. Um, like, um, like these are all physical, like three dimensional ritual altars that she's created for each of the cards, which is like so cool. So it's up there with like, uh, Amy Zerner and, you know, um, someone like Annie Farrar who, who do, uh, working with like, Annie Farrar is still only working with paper, but she's doing it in a really <clears throat> kind of textural way. Uh, and Amy Zerner is working with like really layered fabrics, but this type of work is just like so rad. And I'm, uh, if you know, if you know, you've been around for a while, I was not raised Christian in any ways. I was raised as a Hare Krishna in the US. So like I, you know, my mom was raised Catholic I guess, like, the Catholicism is more of a, like, an ancestral kind of thing, but the way she writes about it in the guidebook um, is very accessible for, like, yeah, people coming from non-Christian backgrounds. Um, I know a lot of folks, that's kind of, like, the the norm in the U.S., um, but for me, it one of the things that really drew me to, um, I mean, the images are just so beautiful, but the guidebook is really fun because we we get these little um, stories about each of these like specific um, incarnations. See, I'm I'm not using the right I don't know the Catholic terms, but each of these little saints um, in these like really localized particular traditions that we get a little bit of history around. But a lot of it is picking up on like how those practices have overlain. Um, uh, earlier pagan traditions or sacred sites um, in a way that's like really layered historically. Um, so, you know, we learn about, um, you know, uh, Egyptian sites in the Mediterranean that have uh, turned into um, these other things or kind of other uh, local, you know, here we've, here we have Kali, right? So we've, uh, and, and there's like a Kali Black Madonna, um, combo in France, you know, you get these really interesting, like hyper-localized traditions and she's like pilgrim, like she's gone on pilgrimage to all of these places and it's just like, it's so cool. And so for me, this is a deck that feels very ancestral in a particular way. And this is another, like, if I need some, like, Oof, we need some wisdom today. Like we need, we need some perspective. We need to get out of my like, you know, 2024 problems. Uh, it's a deck that, um, helps with that. And they're so beautiful. And it, 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 it's another deck that kind of like pairs really well with, with a lot of things. Um, so those are my, those are my, uh, five runners up. Um, <laughs> those are my, my, uh, 
uh, I guess this makes it my top 15. Um, but I'm, I'm, I feel pretty good about those, those choices. So, um, thanks for watching the first one, which was really long. And thanks for, um, hanging out and, uh, watching this one. Um, so I'll see you guys, um, in the next couple weeks to take a look. I'll probably do the same format with my Oracle deck. So I'll have, um, 10, uh, uh, top 10 Oracle and then five runners up. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.